Hi, everybody. This is Eric Altman, sales engineer at Vodia Networks. And uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the uh, Vodia Android app today. Uh, we'll do a little overview, um, show you a few different things here. And uh, at the end, if anybody does have any questions, we'll uh, open up the chat window for any questions that anybody might have. So looking at the uh, overview, we're going to talk about the uh, prerequisites um, for installing the uh, Vodia Android app. We'll talk about QR code uh, provisioning, uh, using the QR code uh, to set up yourself as a user on the app, uh, Google sign-in, um, the few different ways that you can place calls, uh, as well as transferring calls. Uh, this can be paired for Bluetooth, uh, putting calls on hold. Uh, you've got contacts inside of there. Uh, messaging is going to be your instant messaging chat uh, between uh, users on the PBX. There's a history uh, showing your call history, uh, voicemail, talk about checking that and working with those, and then uh, do not disturb status. I'm going to jump right in here. So first of all, the prerequisites. So in order to run the, the latest app, you need to be on the PBX 64.0 or higher. You can check uh, license maintenance if you need to upgrade, um, but this is going to work with 64 or higher, so you're going to need to be on that version. Uh, in order to use this. If the PBX is hosted, it must be resolvable. Uh, this can be used for on-premises PBX, uh, also with uh, either of the Vodia appliances, the I.O. and the I.O.P., and of course can be used on the uh, Vodia multi-tenant hosted PBX. To install the Vodia phone app on your Android, just go to the Google Play Store, type in Vodia phone, and it'll bring it up, and then just go through the standard install there to get everything uh, installed on your phone. When the installation uh, is complete, you're going to be asked a few questions. Uh, allow the Vodia phone to record audio. You can allow that. Uh, obviously, you're going to allow it to make and manage phone calls. And then you do want to allow it to uh, take pictures and record video. And uh, you need to do that if you want to use the uh, QR code provisioning. You're going to need to be able to take a picture from the app. So we do make it easy um, with uh, QR code provisioning to set up your app. Um, when you first open uh, the app, once you've installed it, you're going to see this URL. So it's looking for the URL of the PBX. Uh, and then you could hit Connect. And if you know what that URL is, you could do it that way. Um, but if you don't, that's where this uh, QR code scanning comes in. So from the Vodia app on the desktop, uh, up in the settings, up in the corner, one of the choices is QR code. And it will bring this QR code up right to the front of the screen. So if you go ahead and choose Scan QR, it's going to open up the camera allow you to scan this QR code. Uh, and again, if you haven't allowed to take pictures, make sure you do that. And once you scan the QR code, you're set up. It will provision the account. You'll see all the extensions. It knows the uh, URL of the VBX, and you're good to go. We also support signing in with Google. Um, so you can use the Google sign-in. Uh, again, uh, once you've got, if you didn't use the QR code but you knew the URL, you can put that in right here, and then uh, your extension, password, or just Google sign in. So as long as Google knows where to sign in. Uh, the other prerequisite there is when you do create the user in the PBX, you need to assign their Gmail address. So as long as that Gmail is in that user that you created, they'll be able to use this Google sign in, choose the account that they're using, and sign in that way. Placing a call. So if you want to make a call with this app, um, the first thing you're going to see when you open the app is the extensions page. Um, so once you click on any of the users on the extension page, you're going to be given two options to either call or message them. So you, you can message the user using instant messaging. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, and then if you do hit call, it's going to bring you to this screen that you see right here. So you're going to see who you're calling. There's a timer. Uh, how long the call is, the person's name, their caller ID, uh, and then you have some call control options. If you want to put the call on hold, you can click here. Transferring the call, and we'll look in a second where that brings you. You can put everything on speaker, 
or if you needed to enter some DTMF tones, you can uh, bring up the dial pad and, and use that. Another way to place the call, obviously, too, is to go through your contacts. So when you click on a contact, uh, it will give you that uh, option to go ahead and call that contact. So you can do that. That's placing the call. Now, once you've clicked transfer, so you're here in the screen, you're going to click transfer. It's going to bring you to this screen right here. Who do you want to transfer to? Do you want to transfer to an extension? i will show you all the extensions. You pick the one that you want to transfer to. Uh, you can also choose address book. It will show you your contacts. And again, pick the contact that you want to transfer to. You can also uh, transfer to a dial number. So you bring up the dial pad and go ahead and dial in the number that you need to call. And then you do also have an option to transfer to a held call. So this is going to be more of a, of a supervised transfer. You put somebody on hold. Uh, you can go ahead and call the other person. Once you get them, you say, I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer you to so-and-so. Uh, and you can bring up your held calls, pick the person who's on hold that you want to transfer to, and off the call goes. We do have Bluetooth support, so uh, once that Bluetooth is paired to the Android smartphone, you're going to see the Bluetooth icon. So we saw these other icons before in the live call. Uh, you'll also have a Bluetooth icon if that's paired. Uh, the icon, uh, if the user turns off the headset, the icon is going to disappear, but the call will resume. Here's your, uh, your list of held calls. So again, if we're uh, transferring to a held call, it's going to bring up this list, and you can choose the held call that you want to transfer to. Uh, once you put a call on hold uh, by clicking that hold icon, uh, you can make multiple calls using uh, Vodia's patented technology for multiple calls with WebRTC. Uh, you can also put those multiple calls on hold, and that's why you see three listings here of uh, a few different calls that are being held at the same time. And you can also see how many calls are on hold. Down at the bottom of your extension screen, you'll see a pause button, uh, and you'll see a number, and that number will tell you how many uh, calls you have on hold. You can click that, get to the held calls, and then transfer the calls accordingly. Contacts looks pretty similar to the extension screen. Uh, you're going to have uh, any new contacts that you've added, um, but you can also have global contacts in there, so um, any domain contacts will show up in everybody's app. And then as an individual user, you can just click Add New Contact and uh, put in the information for a new contact. And like we mentioned before, that can be used for transferring either extensions or contacts. So we're just kind of moving over up here on the top tabs. So we looked at extensions, now I'm just looking at contacts. Messaging. So again, once you've uh, chosen uh, one of the users and you choose message instead of call, it's going to bring up this chat window. Uh, you're able to instant message uh, down here. You can type in whatever you need to type in. We do support emojis as well. You can kind of see on this one right here, there's a little thumbs up emoji. Uh, you will get a notification uh, as well. So when you do get a, a chat message coming in, you're going to get a Google notification. And you're going to see the history too. You'll see any of the messages that you've had with that particular user in the past are all going to show up when it brings up that chat window. Here's your call history. So if you're moving over, again, extension contacts, now we're at history. Uh, if you're looking at your call history, you can click the arrow to call that person back. It is going to show you the date of the call. Uh, as well as the name and the caller ID information. So you'll see all of that. And then if you click here, you're calling that person back from your history. So it can be used just for informational purposes to see who's called you, see what calls you made, what calls you might have missed. And then again, functionally, if you need to call them back, just click the arrow and, and that will call them back. Voicemail, the last tab up here at the top. Um, Pretty self-explanatory. Hopefully all of this is, is intuitive and self-explanatory, but we wanted to you know, run it by you so you had a, a better understanding of it all. But once you click the voicemail icon, it will start playing the voicemail. You do have the slider down here, so if you need to jump ahead or jump back in the message, you can just use your, your thumb to move that back and forth uh, to get further in the message or go back and, and re-listen to it. 
uh, those uh, voicemails will also be date and time stamped, so you'll see when it actually came in uh, to the second, uh, as well as the date and, uh, and the caller ID information, so you'll see who that is from, as well as their phone number or their extension. And then Do Not Disturb, so down at the bottom right corner, you can turn on Do Not Disturb. Now from the uh, desktop app, you also have the option to have different statuses for Do Not Disturb. So it could say something like here with Robert Coleman, you see meeting. But here on the app, you will see that little, little minus sign over to the left. That tells us that she is on Do Not Disturb. So this lets your colleagues know if it's okay to call you. This way you're not distracted and it saves them from, from wasting time calling you when you're on Do Not Disturb anyway. So anyone who's looking at this extension pane is going to be able to see if anybody is on Do Not Disturb. And just to explain these little dots right here as well, um, the red dot means they are not available for calls. Uh, the blue dot means they are available through a phone, uh, tied in phone. And if they're green, then they're available phone as well as app. So you will see those icons next to them, and then over to the left, if someone's on Do Not Disturb, you're going to see that Do Not Disturb icon as well. And uh, that's, that's what I got here for you. I mean, the app is straightforward. It's simple. Um, again, once you load it and start using it, I, I don't even know that you'll have to refer back to this um, to get to use it because it's, it's very self-explanatory and intuitive. But if you do have any questions that we've gone through here uh, on the app or anything Vodia related, you can use the little chat icon uh, up on your uh, Join Me screen. And uh, feel free to send any questions that you might have. All right. I see one. One second, and I'll answer the first question. Okay, so someone's asking about the uh, contacts. Um, so right now, currently, yes, you, the contacts is not looking at your phone contacts currently. Um, it's just the contacts that you added, like I explained in that slide. However, it's currently in the works and in development, and probably within the next few weeks, uh, that will be set up so that it will be able to access your phone contacts as well. So yes, not there today. This is our first iteration out there of this. Um, in the next one, uh, we will have that set up so that you can actually call your contacts, not necessarily from the address book uh, in the PBX, but from your contacts that are loaded onto your phone. Uh, is it possible to email the QR code? Yeah, that's, that's another thing that's in the works currently. So um, the idea would be that uh, in a welcome email, you'd be able to uh, send that out so that people could just get an email and scan the QR code right from there. Um, so I see a question about the Windows application um, presented last week. How did the update of the Windows application go presented last week? I mean, it's it's available. It's on YouTube. We, I, I believe, sent it out. Um, if we didn't, um, I'll make sure that they do. But there is a link. If you go to our YouTube page, you can find it there, um, and we can we can send the link out. At least the people who are here, as well as the people who are on the last webinar, so that you'll be able to uh, click that and go to the webinar on the desktop app as well. And the link to download the Windows app um, is within that. Um, within that presentation. Um, I don't know if I have it on the screen here to throw up, um, but uh, it's definitely in the YouTube, uh, YouTube video. Um, let's see if I can uh, find the last one. Give me one second. I'll throw it up here on the screen so that you guys can see it.
Yeah, so in our blog, we actually kind of went through uh, and did a blog of that whole presentation. Up oh, there they are. Okay, so you can see right there is the uh, the link to the Windows app. Um, you're going to go to HTTP portal.vodia.com slash downloads slash app. Uh, if you want to go directly to it, slash win Fodia PBX setup 1.1.0.exe. But if you look up at the URL, you'll see if you go to blog.vodia.com forward slash Vodia underscore Windows underscore app, that will also show you um, this page that we're looking at right here, which is uh, the blog um, showing that presentation. Okay, let me see. I got one more question here. Okay, and again, um, if you go to this URL, someone's saying they can't copy it from the from the screen. Um, just go to blog.vodia.com, vodia underscore windows underscore app. So pretty easy to remember. Once you go there, scroll down, and this is right there. You can actually click on it. Uh, or copy it right from there. And in this blog too, when you go there, I mean we've got all the screens that we did, all the slides are are here, as you'll see, and then we also do have the video that you can uh, click on right here. So right from the blog you can get to the video as well, or go to YouTube and you can get it there. But again, here's the uh, here's the link for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Pretty similar besides the Win Lin and uh, actually at Mac OS should be Mac, not Win right there. But besides that, everything looks good. Any other questions? I'll give you guys another minute, and uh, if you have any others, type them in. Happy to answer them. All right. I would say that we're we're good. Um, I don't see any other questions coming up. Um, appreciate everybody's time today. Again, go to that blog page uh, if you want to get the uh, download for the uh, Windows app. And we'll be posting this uh, webinar as well on YouTube so that you can refer back to it. But um, based on the limited number of questions here, I'm thinking that this was pretty easy to understand and everybody's ready to jump in. So get to 64.0 or higher, download the app, and, and start using it. And if you guys have any questions or anything, you can always call us, 617-446-1399. This is Eric. I'm at extension 451 if you need to speak to me. Thank you, and you all have a great day.